The muon is a subatomic particle that lives for 2.2 microseconds. That is 200,000 times shorter than the blink of an eye. It's a member of the lepton family, which include the electrons and the tau particles, or tauons, the electron neutrino, the muon neutrino, and the tau neutrino. A muon is created by a decay from a more massive particle. It blasts off at close to the speed of light, it looks down at its watch or its phone, and after 2.2 microseconds, it dies, it decays, it decays. This would be where the story ended. However, if we go to study muons out in the wild, then we notice a problem. Naturally, a muon is created in the upper atmosphere by cosmic rays which constantly bombard us by protons and nuclei that strike heavy elements in the upper atmosphere. And these elements decay and produce a pion, a particle that was discovered at Bristol University, shameless plug, by a man named Cecil Powell, a man who was named after this lovely lecture theater. Ooh. Now these pions very, very quickly decay to produce our muons. And these muons rain down towards Earth at a rate of a thousand per square meter per minute. Now the problem arises because even if these muons were being produced a mere 10 kilometers above us at the very bottom of the upper atmosphere, and say they were traveling at 98% the speed of light for their 2.2 microseconds, they should be able to make it about 600 meters to here. So why can I detect them down here? Now the answer is a weird one. What I want it to be is that, oh, this interaction is so energetic that the muons gain a little bit of extra mass, which makes them a little bit more stable so they can reach all the way down to us. Or that just these natural muons are some way longer lived and healthier than our test tube muons. But these are unfortunately not the answer. The answer is much stranger and more fundamental to the universe. The stopwatch of the muon and the stopwatch down here on Earth don't tick at the same rate. Because the faster something cuts through space, the slower it moves through time. These usually ephemeral muons fall to the ground like interminable raindrops, aging around five times slower than the rest of us. We can imagine that as they fall rapidly towards the ground, their 2.2 microseconds only tick slowly by, extending the distance that they can travel and letting them come down and play among the humans. This property of the universe just arises because everyone must agree on the speed of light. They must always see it traveling away from them at the same speed. For someone traveling close to the speed of light, the only way that they can see it progressing away from them at the correct rate is for time to be moving slower for them. Speed is the ultimate anti-wrinkle cream. For example, stationary Sean sees that light has moved one light year, so concludes that he must have experienced 365 days. Whereas flying Felicity, moving close to the speed of light, sees that light has only moved a meter, so concludes that she has only experienced around three nanoseconds. Now this seems like a strange way round to do things, however it makes sense because it hinges upon the idea that if you were to ever go to look down at your watch, it would always tick at the same rate. You would never watch time slow down before your eyes, because how could it? Your brain, the speed that you perceived at, would slow down right along with it, so in this way any effect to you would cancel out. The local system around you will always appear as if it is behaving normally. It's only when you go to compare it to someone else's system, who is moving at a different speed to you, that you'll notice that something odd must have been happening. So you will always perceive time the same way. Boring, I know. If we go back and place ourselves in the shoes of the muon, time passes normally for us. Our day just continues pleasantly. We count down our 2.2 microseconds until we die. But if we look down at Earth, we see everyone squabbling around faster than they otherwise would. These slower moving human beings progress faster through time. So doing nothing really is a waste of time. The real brain twister here is if all this motion is relative, which it is, if it's equally reasonable to say that the muon is moving at x speed relative to the earth as it is to say the earth is moving at x speed relative to the muon, then who is handing out the clocks? He's 
not one of these guys. He's this guy. All the way over here. You discovered the pile, for goodness sakes. Give the man a bigger picture.